Hey devs, in the spirit of Hacktoberfest, I will be showing you how you can clone the weapon mechanics project and contribute to it. So we've added a contribute section where you can see the easily added issues. We only have a few on there, but we'll add more as we find them. But when cloning the repository, there's a few extra steps. So once you're on the wiki, you can go to the developer API section, bottom right, and you get this cloning section. It's not the most straightforward thing. So we're gonna go into the code section, code, copy this link. And now in IntelliJ, uh, if you use Eclipse, you are a serial killer, don't worry about it. We can get from VCS base. Now I've already cloned this repository since of course I've been developing this for some time. So we'll just create a new YouTube folder so we don't have any conflicts. And hit clone. And then your computer's going to struggle because this is a stupidly large project. Okay, so this Gradle task is going to run for a little while, and I kind of want to go get some food, so I'm going to start the next task, which is downloading the dependencies. So Weapon Mechanics comes with a few of these jars automatically installed, which is slightly unethical, but uh, sorry. What we should do, of course, is automatically download them, but that's not always an option. So what we do is... For old versions of plugins that we need, we just include the jars. So now we need old versions of Minecraft servers. For versions, I believe 1.17 and higher, we use something called Paperweight, which is currently being set up, which is why we're taking so long. And it's downloading the server jar for 1.17, 18, 19, and in the future, it'll be 20, 21, you know, all that nonsense but we need to download the old versions. So we have this batch file. Let's see, uh, download spigot libs. This is the important one. So we're gonna open this up. Uh, you're gonna see it literally downloads build tools and builds each individual jar file that we need. So we're going to run this file. Oh, I guess I don't have the batch file plugin on this. Okay, so if you have the batch plugin file, this step is easy. But otherwise, I suppose we need to open in Explore. Get a new command prompt going. Copy this. Or rather, CD paste. So we enter that directory. And then download spigot libs. Not bad. All right, now that's going to start this task. And now I recommend at this point stepping away from your poor, poor computer. It's going to be doing probably an hour of work if it's a laptop, maybe 20 minutes of work if it's a desktop. Uh, go get food, make cookies. <laughs> Now that your dependencies have finished downloading, you'll notice you have the new NMS folder, which stands for Net Minecraft Server, and you have the spigot jars for each version before 1.17. We don't need these old jar files, and we also don't need this build tools folder. So if you want to keep your system clean, go ahead and select all of that and remove it. If for whatever reason you don't like clicking the delete button, you can also use the clean build tools and remove craft bucket jars batch files. Though, um, just, just click delete. Don't be lazy. While that's deleting, we can talk about the next thing. So, weapon mechanics depends on this system called Mechanics Auto Download. And it is a simple library that allows you to automatically download any of our plugins. It's gonna install, well, we're gonna add more features to this in the future. So it, it also includes like update checkers and stuff like that. Um, 
in order to download this automatically, you need a username and password. So in IntelliJ, you need what's called a Gradle properties file. So Gradle dot properties. And you'll notice that this is grayed out, right? If you aren't familiar with Git, uh, this grayed out color means that it's never put online. So anything you put in these files are completely confidential. So user and pass are in your username and passwords. For me, it would be CJ Crafter. So CJ Crafter. And the password is going to be not your GitHub password, because of course that would be extremely sketchy. You don't want to do that. You instead want to go to, I believe, your profile. Nope, sorry, my bad settings. Yeah. And then developer settings and personal access tokens. Uh, you'll notice I have a few of these. Um, oh, that's funny. I should delete that. Uh, what you want to do is generate a new token and give it the ability to read packages. All right. So you, of course, give it some fancy name. Uh, I would set it to never expire. Of course, GitHub doesn't like that, but they can cry about it. And you want to add the ability to read packages. It doesn't need anything else. And once you generate this token, I'm not going to generate it, but it's going to give you an ID. It's going to be a super long thing that looks like this, has all kinds of fun characters. Just paste that in there. OK, now that you've put your token in the Gradle properties file, we can now refresh the Gradle project. I just pressed this Gradle button on the side. If you're unfamiliar with Gradle, it's just a way of structuring your project. When you get to really big projects like weapon mechanics, you need to have some way to properly structure it. Gradle organize a few tasks for us. So we have, um, not, most of these aren't important to you. The ones you care about are custom ones that we have to set up. So we're gonna go add configuration, and then we're gonna select Gradle. And now I always forget the name of this. So out of curiosity, can we scroll through these and find it? Um, no, we cannot. So let's find that first. To do that, all you have to do is check the main uh, build.gradle file. Uh, this is not important to you. The build is what you like. So we're going to copy this build for spigot release. Add configuration, gradle. This. Hit OK. So now we can try to run this task. Admittedly, I haven't done this in a long time, so I'm not quite sure if it'll work first time. But you're going to see a build file get generated. Right now, it just says a versions.txt. That's not important to you at all. That's just for us when we release our project onto GitHub. So far, so good. At this point, if you're having trouble, uh, you should check to make sure that you have proper Java versions installed. Uh, you should make sure that your dependencies have generated correctly because you need all of these jar files in order to run the project. Uh, additionally, you cannot run this until you first let the paper tasks complete. So if it has been less than 30 minutes since you have downloaded this project, that might be another cause for concern. Otherwise, if you believe you've done everything right, just ask a question in the Discord server. We'll gladly help you make sure you get the project set up. All right, so amazingly, that worked. <laughs> and you'll notice we now have mechanicscore.jar and weaponmechanics.jar in the top left. You also have the zip file and resource pack, but that's less important. Um, you can now make edits. So if you have this cloned in a private repository, you can, of course, use your own main branch. But we, for example, we meaning DCAD and I, we are the main developers. So we can contribute to the main branch. But since you guys are not main developers, you have to create your own branch. So if you're not familiar with that process, you would go to Git. 
uh, click on master and select new branch for master. This will allow you to create a new branch that you can edit and then push code to. And then uh, one thing that you should Google is something like how to create a pull request. And GitHub will give you some information. Now, I'm not going to read this out to you, but you need to go through this pull request process in order to contribute your code. And uh, us developers will then check this pull request tab, find code that you've contributed, and make comments on it. So for example, this open pull request, uh, this was created by me, and it's a dealing with an old issue. Let's find a pull request made by a different person, though. 17 close. Uh, Melon Hell, I believe, is one of our contributors. Let's find it right here. Alternative Zoom. So he suggested some changes, and then push some code, and then requested a review from us. So when you request a review, uh, there should be an option in the top right. Uh, you request me, myself or DCAD to look at your code. And then we'll make some suggestions like, OK, well, this was a very productive suggestion. But I recommended uh, shorthand values. Uh, and then we talked about different ways that we could implement this, different steps we need to take. And then DCAD decided that he would uh, make those changes, make those fixes, and then merge it into the main branch. And after that happens, you get your name added to the contributors list, which is, I suppose, fancy, maybe good for uh, applications, whatever you need. Uh, if you need help with any of this process, again, Discord server is open to you. You can ask questions. I should probably help this guy. <laughs> um, I believe that is everything you need to know. I understand that this project structure is pretty crazy. Most of the code that you may want to edit is going to be in this weapon mechanics file. And of course, you can expand it out and see how the weapon mechanics plugin works. So it starts here, of course. You've got listeners, you got configuration files. If you're not familiar with Java, this is probably a little bit out of your league. I'm sorry, there's probably no way for you to contribute. Uh, there are a few things you can add, though, if you go into this resources file. You could, say, add your own weapon suggestions or contribute to the resource pack. Uh, we'll also add you to the contributors list if you do that. But other than that, I suppose that's all we can go over. If you're really considering contributing, uh, thank you. And it makes our lives much easier.